uh, when Kamulan uh, would take the place of her father's place uh, at war. Uh, they, they, they craved words on her back. And I saw this as a blend uh, that, that is very symbolic okay, for me and for the reader. It shows the authority of the word. Uh, uh, the word as a performative. The performative nature of a word as a, as a vow, as a manifesto, uh, as a, a pronunciamento. Uh, it stands for blood, sacrifice, uh, suffering, and filiation. Uh, it visualizes a female body in which blood is mixed with ink because of that scene. Uh, it emblematizes the whole process of mixing, integrating, and hybridizing. It's the same in the same process that things and flesh fuses with fabulans uh, to emerge as one body, carrying in its hands a pen and a sword. The battlefield and literature uh, um, used to be in uh, immense <coughs> arenas. They become spaces for women to rebel to subvert the laws of the oppressor and elected justice. King Sinan is her front line in which she raises her voice loud by disturbing the literary code first, then scrumping the general order. Like Famulan, King Sinan's text can be said feminine and masculine. So even the text is her product or, well, or, or um, bisexual. So uh, it is at the same time incorporating the epic as categorized as a male genre and short stories as female genre. So even the book. Biologically speaking and physically speaking, it can be seen as a space for the two sexes and all uh, genres. It is a bisexual text, biologically fused into the heart of a heroine author. Okay. Um, it's indeed a uh, I mean, very interesting talk. And, um, it's a bit frustrating to have to interrupt our, our speakers. Uh, because we have to stick to the time limit. My advice is that they don't read out their papers uh, in full. But that they keep in mind that this is just a presentation, 15 minute presentation. And I'm sure that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, our dean is here today, and uh, well, uh, um, there's a pledge to publish all these papers. So um, <coughs> the audience and other people will have the opportunity to read these very interesting talks. Without further ado, our next speaker is Mr. Hassan Khameri. Yes. Um, and the title of his uh, talk is Interdisciplinary Hybrid Research in Pragmatics Research, The Convergence of Hofstede's Social Cultural Framework and Brown and Levinson's Model of Linguistic Politeness in the Analysis of Speech Acts. Very long title. Um, uh, before starting, I would like to express a uh, uh, really great pleasure to be uh, a success for uh, the Department of English. Uh, not only for the, and the, or and the organization of this uh, symposium, but uh, also uh, getting the works for the proceedings of this uh, symposium uh, published just a few days before it's uh, for the event. Uh, I start with the, the title of uh, my presentation. I will have to think it bigger. Uh, to the internet, they distinguish between uh, 
the two main product strategies that interactions use in conversation, namely negative product strategies, which are performed to avoid advance through uh, referrals and positive politeness and strategies that are performed to avoid clients by emphasizing friendliness. Uh, the other framework is Oster's cultural dimension theory, which is originally a phase, uh, framework for cross-cultural communication that shows the effects of uh, society's culture on the values of its uh, members and how these values relate to behavior. Uh, in this extensive uh, cultural preference uh, study, Hofstede proposed four main dimensions, uh, namely uncertainty avoidance, masculinity versus femininity, power distance and collectivism versus individualism. Now, uh, Hofstede's worldwide survey resulted in grouping the countries, this is very important, into different poems by comparing countries' uh, values uh, across uh, uh, different uh, 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 value scores, uh, or different criteria like shared language, common historical background, similar religious uh, beliefs, and uh, identical political systems. Now, he concludes uh, that Western countries are on the individualist end of uh, the dimension, and Oriental and African societies, including uh, Tunisia, of course, uh, are on the collectivist end. Now, uh, start with women, with, with because uh, um, quote here, different uh, societies and different communities, people speak differently. These differences in ways of speaking are profound and systematic. Uh, they reflect different cultural values or at least different hierarchies of values. Uh, different ways of speaking, different communicative styles uh, can be explained and make sense of in terms of independently established different cultural values and cultural priorities. Uh, language and culture are inextricably related. Uh, Mitchell and I maintain that language and culture are not separate but are acquired together with uh, each providing support for the development of uh, the other. Now, uh, one of the uh, famous uh, quotes I actually I personally like is uh, uh, American anthropologist Agar, as he puts it, he says that culture uh, erases the circular one language that people usually draw. You can master grammar, the dictionary, but without culture you won't communicate. With culture you can, however, communicate with rocky grammar and the limited vocabulary. Now, cultures have different levels of politeness and individuals exhibit differences in the ways of expressing them. Two cultures that have different rules for politeness are Tunisia and the United States. Now, some speech acts draw on the cultural differences portrayed in Hofstede's cultural dimensions. I mean, they use Hofstede's uh, framework, they apply it uh, on speech act studies, which is a uh, which is actually, here lies the interdisciplinarity of uh, uh, topics, of subjects, or even uh, um, branches of uh, knowledge. Now, these studies report that culture influences the choice of strategies used to express politeness. Now, bearing in mind the isomorphism between language and culture and perceiving language as a series uh, of acts, the present uh, research uses the definition of uh, the culture uh, of, state, of of state, where he uh, views the, the language or culture of the software of uh, the mind. It is a mental program that affects human activity, including verbal communication. Hofstede's dimensions of culture will be used to find out the culture-specific differences in native and non-native speakers' production of face-making acts. And here I use it, uh, just two dimensions which are relevant to, uh, to this uh, study, uh, individualism versus collectivism and uh, power uh, dimensions. Now, in individual societies, briefly, have low scores on power distance scales, while collectivist society exhibit higher uh, scores. Collectivist societies tolerate inequality. High states individuals receive more respect than those of lower states. On the other hand, uh, uh, in individual societies, states differences barely exist, and high states people do not receive much difference. According to Hofstede's model, the United States is considered a low power distance country, while Tunisia. Uh, as a member of the Arab countries, because uh, Tunisia is not incl included by name in his framework. Now, he puts Tunisia as part of the Arab uh, country, it is perceived as high power distance uh, society. Now, how are we going to incorporate Hofstede's culture of uh, values framework into speech uh, act uh, studies? Now, using uh, Hofstede's research, Hunt uh, asserts that there are cultural differences between Western and Eastern cultures. He claims that individualism is prevailing in Western countries like the UK and the US, while collectivism is the norm in Arabic-speaking countries. Although he acknowledges that cultural values might change over time and over the course of generations, he does not deal with situations in which an individual in the culture can integrate both values of individualism and collectivism. 
Ahmed also investigated the speech hack apology in Iraqi Arabic and English. Uh, he found that native uh, Arabic speakers used apology strategies and formulas which reflect cult cultural uh, values and uh, beliefs. Respondents preface their apologies with expressions such as my I, uh, my beloved in Arabic. These expressions show the importance of restoring keeping brother of eyes between their formulas. Iraqi Arabic speakers seem to use an exaggerated number of apologies. This is very beneficial to save the offended person's face. The importance attributed to the other as a member of the same cultural group shows that the Iraqi culture is a collectivist uh, society. EFL learners produce the same structures deriving from Iraqi Arabic, which seems uh, which seem, uh, inappropriate. Uh, another main JSM investigator refused the requests and offers in Iraqi Arabic and British English. He found that Iraqi Arabic speakers used fewer and direct strategies and more direct strategies when they expressed refusals to lower states interlocutors. This choice might be explained by the hierarchical structure of the Iraqi society in the power, religion, and governmental positions create states differences. British English speakers used indirect strategies which both uh, with both sorry, high and low status individuals, which reflects the rich belief in the equality. <coughs> Al-Haidi also focuses on how Saudi and Australian teachers and students perform the speech act of refusal in academic settings. Saudi teachers use the strategy of direct refusal more often than their students. Unlikely Australian teachers and students employ the same frequency of direct refusal strategies. His findings seem to confirm Hofstede's conclusions about the differences between Saudi Arabia and uh, Australia. Now he concludes that the closeness between the Australian teachers and students in comparison to a um, uh, Saudi group might support offset here of power distance in both these uh, countries. In a similar vein here, I'd like to take the Tunisian context. Uh, Hadrami, in 2009, in his uh, PhD uh, dissertation, compared the protection of refusal strategies among these EFS students and British uh, students. He found that if the students use direct strategies to perform refusals. The Tunisian respondents were more sensitive to states in their refusal behavior than their rich counterparts. Hadrami deduced that the social cultural norms affecting the Tunisian reformist refusal behavior belong to a collective society, and this is the way it's debatable uh, in this study. Now, these studies and others have proven that, uh, proven that the speech acts are amenable to social investigation in the sense that they represent a rich repertoire that can be examined and understood uh, from various vantage points. Speech act studies have shown that many disciplines such as sociology, intercultural communication, and pragmatics seem to be intrinsically uh, related. Dealing with the human communication requires the researcher to look at the linguistic behavior from various sides in an attempt to better understand it. Now, uh, the, study, the study examines uh, uh, differences in the way a sample of native speakers and non native speakers of English perform face threatening acts, uh, refusals, disagreements, and criticism. The communication behavior of both the groups of respondents is analyzed. A paper research is carried out using collective and quantitative collected uh, data collected with the help of a road plane. Now, the questions that are uh, addressed here are what extent do contextual factors of social distance and social power influence the protection of FTAs, and how relevant is Hofstede's social culture model analysis of FTA? Now, the results, just a brief introduction of uh, the results. Now, uh, non natives use direct strategies to criticize the friend's choice, for example, of clothes, or different scenarios here. Native speakers seem to opt for indirect strategies, while in the American culture, friends avoid criticizing each other's choice of clothes and appearance. In the Disney culture, it is acceptable to criticize a friend's choice at the shopping encounter. A friend's criticism and advice are rather expected and even appreciated. Uh, in the Tunisian culture, directness does not result in misunderstandings or conflicts between friends because the relationship is assumed to be strong enough to stand in polite love with the others. Here I took some examples from natives. I'm not sure I really like it. I think we could find something better if we keep looking. Uh, compared to the sadness, you must be kidding, it's unfashionable. Uh, now, regardless of the minus distance context, natives and non natives employ direct strategies considerably to criticize or correct classmates' claim. Uh, the setting, which is classroom context, and the relationship between participants uh, in this, which might explain the choice of participants. So, the result confirmed that classmates uh, have close relationships and it is socially accepted behavior that they provide each other with comments or corrections in academic uh, context. Even their teachers and professors. Uh, do encourage them to 
to debate, discuss, and criticize uh, each other, as long as they are in the uh, academic context. Uh, here are also some examples. You are completely wrong. You can, how can you claim something you are not uh, sure of? Uh, that's wrong, as you see here, using direct forms of uh, refusal. Uh, native speakers and non-natives uh, did not show hesitation or concern for the human space and provided direct forms of correction. Performative verbs of refusal and disagreement were used by both the groups. Now, the last distance uh, scenario here addressing this failure, while the natives used indirect strategies, non-natives used direct strategies. I took some two examples here. Uh, for God's sake, stop fooling people. This is a list by non native to a stranger, someone he doesn't uh, know. Compare this to, uh, we we'll let you know if we need any further help. This is rather indirect. Uh, now, now, the social power, uh, the findings show that the FSU and sponsors were not affected by the high states of their delivery. His varying degree of familiarity did not change the informant's behavior. Both groups used primarily direct strategies to refuse the uh, high power, uh, sorry, the high power distance. Uh, teacher, for example, father, university, uh, professor. Uh, the gravity of the act, uh, accusing a student of uh, plagiarism, might have pushed the speaker to realize the speech act directly regardless of the interlocutor's status. The others, I strongly disagree with you. It's my personal work. The Kinesian student are best to supervise and questions the project if his research paper is a case where direct performative is used uh, to a professor without mitigation. Right, so when the speaker's interests are at stake, power relations are uh, I took uh, some examples here uh, from the natives' uh, data. Uh, over the year, we are supposed to meet at 1 o'clock. I have written down my calendar that we are supposed to meet at 1 o'clock. Another example, I really don't know what to say, but you are kidding, you know, kind of hitting a nerve here. I can assure you that this is my own work. I'm not the kind of student who takes credit of someone else, etc. So the American informants were aware of very good power and the politeness conventions required in such uh, contexts. Now, other officers acknowledged that cultural values may change over time, but over the course of generations, it did not deal with situations in which an individual and a culture can integrate both values of individuals and collectivism. In the case of the Tunisian culture, it seems that collectivist values have been replaced by more individualist uh, principles, political, cultural, and educational uh, uh, changes, of course. Are behind that. Uh, so, however, one should not presume that the Tunisian culture, uh, so, so, sorry, sorry, has completely lost uh, all its cultural, traditional specificities, which distinguish it from uh, other societies and culture. The Tunisian culture is therefore a combination of both Western individualist and Eastern collectivist uh, principles. Now, quickly, I'd like to move to some concluding points here. The findings show that EFS students use a direct stretches in France. Direct stretches are recommended and appreciated in mainstream Tunisian culture because they portray sincerity and honesty of France. The use of direct stretches to perform disagreement does not have negative uh, effects on the interlocutor's relation. In the Tunisian culture, direct stretches are expected between France and they may express involvement and camaraderie. Teasing and insults among friends do not reinforce the FDA, but rather reinforce solidarity and strong friendship bonds, which is consistent with the cultural norms of the Tunisian society and the sign of collectivist culture. Uh, EFL students use a direct stretches considerably in wide distance context, where the address and the address were strangers, which reveals that the informants were more concerned with showing that the address's claims were incorrect or appropriate than clearing for maintaining or enhancing their case. Now, the frequent use of direct strategies display the changing nature of the Tunisian society where collectivist principles are giving way to more individualist attitudes. So, the Tunisian culture is different from other non Western collectivist cultures. Uh, collectivism and individualism are points in a continuum of possibilities rather than the only two possibilities. In practice, most people exhibit some combination of individualism and collectivism in their attitudes and behavior. So the category for the view that all non-Western cultures belong to the collectivist pole requires the consideration. Instead of adopting a two-pole view of cultures, of uh, these individualist versus collectivist, cultures can be studied in a continuum that would respect the changing nature of cultures over time, dependent on socio-economic, political, and cultural factors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Freddy, and uh, for, for your presentation and for sticking.
No malice intended. It's still not uh, right. No, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, have, I have to rush you, I'm sorry. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Eamon Bohani, who will um, uh, talk to us about hybrid intelligence, promises and threats of uh, artificial intelligence. Absolutely. Without further ado, I mean, you have the floor. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Many, many thanks to all those who have made this event possible. And believe me, I am not here thinking of myself as a member of the steering committee. All my colleagues know that my contribution has been insignificant. I'm thinking of those who made the difference, who made real contribution, and I am particularly thinking of one person, the person who defined himself today, this morning, very rightly, by the way, as our Mus'aj Mudir. So thank you very much, our Mus'aj Mudir, and uh, give us more of your Iz'aj. Wa min al-Iz'aji ma humid. Um, one of his achievements, our Mus'aj Mudir, has been the publication of our articles before the, the, the event itself. I have been notified of that this morning, which has made any summary of my article quite useless, as you can read the, the article itself. So I have decided to change very deeply my presentation. In the United States, as many of you know, people usually start their presentations with jokes. In China, people begin their presentations with an apology. And I would like to begin my presentation with an apology for my very bad joke. <laughs> and I'm not thinking about the joke I've already made at the expense of my friend Mimu. I'm thinking of the joke I am going to play on you, all of you. Think of it as an attempt to be thought-provoking without failing to be, as my usual habit, without failing to be provoked. It is not very advisable in academia to take oneself as a starting point, but that's exactly what I am about to do. I stand before you, and even those who know me, who don't know me, sorry, do not fail to remark that I am a blind person, and believe me, this is not a problem for me. But I would like to give you a hypothesis. Imagine if in a few years you hear that I recover the sight. How? Thanks to hybridization. Let us imagine, and it is not an, it is not an imagination, it is not a sci-fi, the technology I'm going to talk about does exist. Let us imagine that I decide to implant uh, an artificially enhanced lenses equipped with artificial intelligence that allows me to see what is what are the reactions you are going to have I'm sure most of you will be very happy for me that's for sure and I thank you very much in advance I'm sure most of you will be amazed and some would go to the extent to exclaim Al-Munur. But the question I am asking you, and I will give you five seconds to think, so you will, will, you will certainly make a mistake. Uh, is there anyone who is going to be jealous? Is there anyone who is going to be so jealous? that the person in question is going to go and visit my doctors 
to ask them to remove their natural eyes to enjoy the hybridization with artificial intelligence? Would you do that? Five seconds. I'm sure most of you would say no, but as I said, you will make a mistake. That's a very serious mistake. You have made a methodological mistake because you assumed that in the best case scenario, the lenses I am describing to you are going to be as good as natural eyes. But that's a mistake. That will never be the case. At its current level, as I said, the technology does exist. At its current level, the technology allows a recovery of a level of sight, which is not very satisfactory. But as you know, technology does improve and its space of improvement is really huge. If you want a comparison, just think of your mobile phones. 20 years ago, 20 years ago your mobile phones were stupid. Today they are smart. If you want another comparison, think of the NASA and of yourselves. In your pocket today, you have, thanks to your mobile phones, to your smartphones, you have a level of calculation that is superior to all the powers of the NASA in the 1960s, the power that allowed the NASA to send men to the moon. In your pocket, you have far more capacity of calculation thanks to your smartphones. So you see the improvement of high-tech is really impressive and it is not to be excluded that the AI equipped lenses I am describing to you will be improving day after day and one day they will be much better than your natural eyes. For example, imagine if, they, if it is possible to have eagle-like sight. Imagine if these lenses can be connected to internet making those who enjoy them artificial genius, geniuses as they can have access to data, to big data immediately. <coughs> so the, 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 the mistake you made was not to ask what are the services these lenses are going to provide? Ask this question, then you can think, and then you can decide. And Mr. President, please let me know when the time is over, or two minutes before, so I can conclude. Okay. Thank you very much. So, are you convinced? No. I'm sure you are not convinced. You are saying to yourselves, the guy is crazy. We are never going to take uh, the risk of removing our, our function eyes, whatever the services might be. This decision of yours is wise if and only if all people follow your example. And they will not. Why? Because if a minority takes this risk and if it is successful in taking it, the result will be a minority of people that enjoys comparative advantages that are huge. So, individuals and parents will progressively try to equip themselves and